There's a lot of layers to Ryu Hayabusa. Not only is he a super ninja, but he has overpowered swords, which I'm going to go in more detail later on in this video on why his swords are so overpowered. But to cut a long story short, this sword, or true dragon sword, one could say, the very essence of the dragon, the 13 dragons, which I'm going to talk about later on in this video, they put their powers, essence, in the sword, which was made the dragon sword a formidable weapon, placing their last hopes in their humans, aka the dragon lineage, which, which I'm going to talk about later on in this video put in the form of one of their fangs, a sword, because they was betrayed by one of their other dragons, the dark dragon. I stand by my boy Ryu. This game right here helped me get through some rough days in high school. But yeah, he's a super ninja by every stretch of the imagination with crazy super strength, fighting speed. He's skilled with a lot of assortment of weapons, including the classic ninja stuff like shurikens, even bow and arrows, huge weapons like this. He can just twirl or swing around like it's nothing. He can use pretty much every element known to man, including fire, electricity, whether it be wind, or just straight full-blown tornadoes, even ice. So yeah, pretty much all the major elements. I mean, this is how his blast power looks in action. Like, he can literally turn into an inferno-type flame to cover a large area of effect to really show how deadly he can be. In this particular case, you can see how he does fire style type stuff. This reminds me of some Naruto fire style, fire dragon jutsu type stuff. Let me stop bringing up Naruto. Just a lot of ninja references. He has enough blast power to blast apart helicopters. He can fire energy projection, literal black hole nimpo at his opponent. You telling me this guy can fire literal black holes at you? You might want to dodge. I thought the guy was scary when he had fire against you or slashed you with wind attacks. Or just have protection around him while he's in the middle of fighting without him having to do anything. And this occasion really reminds you of some substitution jutsu. Do I look beaten to you? The art of substitution. That really reminds me of some Naruto stuff. Substitution jutsu. His movements look so inhuman. Like he, how he looks like he teleports here short distances. When it comes to his raw speed, look how he moves around his opponent. Blitzing him like... Z -Z -Z -Z. Imagine a guy swinging a big old staff at you at eye blurring speeds and you can't even react to it. It's implied he can literally teleport. It's one of his moves even though he does have superhumanly blinding speed to where he can just move faster than i can see at times he has techniques that look similar to the hidden lotus from naruto a lot of ninja similarities like this from naruto you know in really old games he had like hourglasses that can freeze time for five seconds and stuff he's been attacked by swords like the sword of chaos swords that suck up your life force one can argue he can fly he can just make a piece of equipment and levitate it and just stand on the equipment he levitates like using this some type of ninja art to pick up this big old rock that he's standing on and floating while he's on it so he does have some form of telekinesis and here it looks like he transformed into some spiritual bird or something and teleported away physically we're talking about a guy that's clashing with building size stuff i mean just look at this building size thing trying to stop him and he stops it with his strength he's supporting all this weight coming down on his leg Notice how in the lore of the game, they talk about how the dragon sword in hand gives Ryu his body courses with unfathomable power. So yeah, the sword is an equalizer. Notice how they say the supernatural forces he faces threatens the world itself. He can take on full-blown tanks and big old mechanized things with just nothing but a sword. He even states how he can take it down. He can take this thing down. Look how he just cut a big chunk of his arm off with his cutting power. Normal humans that are spectating can't believe his strength are definitely not normal, even in this universe, normal humans. Just different parts of the arm getting cut off. Amazing. Such power. Ryu is the same guy that clashed blows and traded blows with a literal the Statue of Liberty that was empowered or whatever. As massive as it is, actually a threat for something this big. And look how he staggers it like that and cuts it up. Cuts the shackles. If we assume that Ryu actually fought the real Statue of Liberty in all its glory and it at least has to weigh 200 tons. Luckily in real life we actually have weight for things like this. 225 tons. Staggering something this big. Giant aircrafts like this. Ryu can just come up to it and cut it up with his strength like that. These missiles he just avoids them. Supersonic speed at least. Certain villains are bigger than certain villains, but a lot of the villains towards the end of the game are in the lore more powerful. Like for example, the true dragon sword Ryu's facing here. This being he's fighting here is literally the size of buildings, dodging attacks, speed, and etc. Can damage these type of beings with his raw cutting power just in general. This goddess being is literally the size of buildings and he can literally slice all that force like that.
Just look at the size comparison, yet he's fighting these size beings. And these beings are this big, they should be able to at least hit as hard as they weigh, right? Like being able to parry full-blown sword strikes with his strength and stop it on the spot, showing that he can parry or strike with similar strength, cause severe damage to the same being. Cut beings this big, literally in two slabs with that level of power. He can cut all that off. Proof of this goddess's power, Look at how the goddess just cleaves skyscrapers apart and he's just overpowering and parrying attacks from this being. Him and Momoji literally fought this being that was literally on some mountain size type stuff. I'm not joking. Showing that they have to have strength or power in general competent to beings this large. Even though this being is mountain size, he can still cut with enough power. Cut not one arm, but both arms on this occasion with Momoji working together with him like mountain sized little limbs. They're just cutting off. Despite this being being this massive, put this being's lights freaking out. Eyes went dim. A boss in the middle of the game is, you know, mountain sized and they can just overpower it. On top of actually defeating Archfiend, this is backed up by the fact of how durable he is too. He was literally at the epicenter of the Archfiend literally exploding, which was a mountain sized explosion at the top of here right here. And he's literally was standing right there after the explosion happened. Like, he's literally like, okay, and gets rocks crumbled on top of him. Oh, no big deal. I'm fine because I'm a super ninja. Even though he curb stomped him, the fact that this explosion was this big is massive. And he just ate it like it was nothing, y'all. This explosion consumed most of Mount Fuji. It's literally that big. Thanks to his performance against the mountain-sized being, he's right here. And cutting limbs off this mountain-sized being, we can conclude at least he could cut with way more force than nuclear bombs and just cut mountains apart with ease. I'm just saying. He can block automatic gunfire consistently with his reflexes or just deflecting them with his sword. Ryu has fought beings like Alexei, who's... He's a being that can control actual lightning to shoot storms, and it's implied that Ryu can deflect these lightning blasts. You can see the storm he's creating up there. Yeah, he can literally manipulate lightning. Master of lightning. And Ryu can defeat a being that can attack at these lightning levels of speed or react to his attacks in general. One could say is at least as fast as lightning or faster than lightning. When I Google the speed of lightning, it says it can roughly be 270,000 miles per hour, which means he can react to things moving at him at over 200,000 miles per hour. Just another occasion of Ryu having crazy fighting speed. Missile, he can react to it, so he's way faster than those things. Yep, again. One can make the argument that, depending on if you take some of the older artifacts he has as canon, one can technically say he could achieve infinite speeds for a certain burst of time or a short time. Because in older games like this, he had like equipment that allowed him to do time freeze or time stop. But is this something he still has? Or was that just a gameplay mechanic? Or is it still a part of him now? You know that Hidden Lotus technique I showed you? In this particular occasion, it kind of showed how powerful it was. Of course, momentum was kind of on his side here. But at the same time, us humans don't weigh that much to like literally cause this much force just from a fall a lot of that is ryu actually producing it thanks to in the zoomy drop it can create that much of an explosion although it is true that ryu's muscles and just anything about him in general is just raw power in general is already insane on his own he has overpowered weapons like the true dragon sword or dragon sword that some would say ryu having an overpowered weapon of sword of this such kind of reminds me of beings like black knight from marvel who have weapons that can hurt cosmic beings or even like the ebony blade for example that can literally hurt beings way out of his physical strength tier but having this weapon kind of changes the game that's how i see the, the true dragon sword for ryu even though he's um literal super ninja mortal you can literally fight guys thanks to weapons like this the reason why the dragon sword is so strong is because it literally contains the internal soul of a dragon and when joined with the dragon sword this piece the full extent of its power it's revealed it's the spirit and soul and, and essence of the dragon which is why the sword is so overpowered when you dig deep into the ninja god in lore from my understanding there was actually a supreme deity the first deity known as stated that gave birth to all elements and provided them with order and function this is basically the beginning of how the archfiend how the dragons and stuff got born in the lore of ninja gaiden basically ended up getting another half that would challenge him because there existed the territory of chaos keep chaos in note formed from elements without shape this chaos which had been forgotten during the blessings of existed at first as only an instinctual fear but eventually the chaos began to take shape and a consciousness that yeah the literal chaos got a consciousness was formed at first it wasn't no threat to the first deity because it was a small envious presence but eventually it grew and became clearer this marked the appearance of hatred the chaotic nature of hatred further evolved it bringing it to the level of a deity 
So this first deity was creating everything in the universe, creating an aspect, and the aspect eventually grew to a level that could challenge him. What kind of aspect did you create? That's when it's being known as Vigor, this guy's important by the way, came into existence thanks to being born out of hatred. The ancestor of all the Archfiends, all them fiends that you see you play throughout the game, he is the very first ancestor of all them Archfiends and them powerful beings Ryu has taken down by the way, are just like descendants of this guy. Don't worry, I'm bringing up Vigor for a reason guys, just work with me. Vigor began to develop the territory of the creator of the universe during endless solar and lunar eclipses because of Vigor and Grudo conflicting with each other, the earth shook and split. The seas dried up only to flood into existence again. Apparently defeated the creator of the universe. Talking about he lost his strength. Just from these facts alone, which is important to Ryu, we know that Vigor has the power to shake the earth, split the earth, overwhelm the creator of the universe. Based on me literally showing you the evidence like that. Literally lost his strength. And that's how the world began to plunge into chaos once again. Then... Grudo said, man, I'm getting bodied too bad. Let me split myself into four different pieces. Sentiment, wisdom, immortality, and creation. Each part became a deity itself, controlling sentiment, wisdom, immortality, and creation. Eventually, they would come together to, re to restore shape to the world again. Him splitting up basically explains why we don't see the Supreme Deity no more in Ninja Gaiden because he split himself like he split himself up into pieces of different dragons, basically, or serpents like the Deity of Creation, which is still a part of Grudo, technically, if we're being honest, just a piece of him, one of the four pieces. This serpent gave birth to a tiny presence, the seeds of life. These seeds managed to take hold and grow in the storm of chaos and so slightly began to evolve, eventually becoming the 13 dragons whose destinies were to be found in battle. These dragons, which are technically pieces of the divine creator anyway, waged an endless battle against Vigor, who never ceased in his attempts to bring the world into hatred. They eventually was able to overpower Vigor. Like, imagine a god existing, right? And God ends up creating an aspect of evil. God starts off being stronger than this evil. This evil ends up getting so powerful and, and it grew in power over time to where this evil actually overpowered the creator of the universe, right? So then this God gets frustrated that he's getting overwhelmed by the, the darkness. So he splits himself into different aspects of himself. One of these aspects give birth to something that was able to defeat the actual darkness stated in the lore and how they evolve to become the important 13 dragons that we know and love the only reason why vigor wasn't completely destroyed is because one of these 13 dragons actually summoned some hatred with his feeling due to this he was able to keep vigor from being completely destroyed of course there's got to be one dragon out of the bunch of god's aspects that got the betray that's when one of the dragons joined with vigor you're probably thinking, why does Ryu matter and all of this stuff? Well, hold with me. Now that one of the dark dragons that was once a part of the actual Supreme Creator is on the dark side now, Vigor has the tools he needs to further his advance into the territory of Grudo, thanks to the help of one of the aspects of God himself. This conflict continued throughout eons of history, and during the struggle, the first spark of humans, and uh, you see where I'm going with this, humans, Ryu's a human, first appeared in the form of ancient tribes, the dragon lineage, yeah, reuse genetics, and archfiends continued their battle for tens of thousands of generations. The struggle finally ended when the members of the dragon lineage, reuse lineage, was able to seal away the archfiends and their spawn. So now that you know why this sword is so important, it's because a Gerdo basically made aspects of himself, them aspects of themselves put their souls and power in the thing like this so one could argue this is a universal type weapon that can harm concept level beings and stuff of that sort which explains why the sword seems to be the main go-to when it comes to narratively speaking clashing with beings that can shake the earth split the earth and overwhelm the creator of the freaking universe and since only those of the dragon lineage can wield the sword one could say he's one of the few beings not all beings that can wield universal levels of power or destructive capacity potentially what if i told you Ryu has actually fought one of the dark dragons one of the ones that betrayed the other 13 other 12 different dragons vigor the demon of destruction ryu did fight vigor's disciple earthly representative to fully quantify how powerful are these descendants of the actual god of this universe are but we see them do some over-the-top stuff like just changing the environment during the boss battle like this, this representative of vigor for example implied to be able to do all of this type of destructive capacity so yeah they're still ridiculously strong but it's hard to quantify if they're equivalent to the actual main creator and things of that such this is one of those universes where it's hard to get a real reading on how strong these characters actually are but how strong do you think he is how strong do you think this sword is what lore about ryu makes him super overpowered that you think i'll see you guys later though
I'm glad you are enjoying your time on the channel. Make sure you check out the playlist on the channel to see other House Strong videos. If you like what this channel is offering, make sure you hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys later.